If you turn a painting around and you looked at the back of it, it would tell its own story, you know, depending on what has been done. There are paintings that have been glued to sheets of steel to keep it from separating. There, there are paintings that have been ripped down the middle and a conservator will have to go in and literally restitch a canvas together, like in situ, basically, and pull it back together. Like any famous work of art that looks good, that does not look like it's 500 years old, has been touched by a conservator, including statues, steel, enameled statues, anything like that has probably been touched by a conservator at this point. I did have an opportunity to intern at the Smithsonian American Art Museum. They have the Lunder Conservation Center, and I spent a year in Washington, D.C. doing that. And I got to learn more about the conservation process. I got to assist the conservators at that institution. And I did also get to work on some paintings there as well. They say that the most work you do in art conservation is undoing other conservators' mistakes, essentially. Because back in the old days, they would, have, they would do all sorts of stuff to try and fix paintings. They would impregnate the canvas with wax and things like that. And at the time, it worked. But after that continued, it started causing its own problems and are not reversible, essentially. In general, if there's loss from a surface of a painting, like the artist may have done an underpaint in one media and then painted on top of that in a different media, and then that would mean that the paint on top can just flake off, essentially, or fall off. If you had loss on a painting, essentially, you would want to fill that with kind of a spackle to get it as level as possible from the surface of the painting to the point where if you have a lot of embossing or like a lot of ridges and things like that on the surface of the painting, you would actually sculpt what it would look like. So if you have like a big ridge of paint here and this chunk is missing, you would fill it with spackle and then sculpt it into the shape of that brush stroke itself. And the actual paints that you would put on top of that are paper thin paints that literally are just pigment that you put over it. Everything that you do in conservation, including creating like the fake ridges and things like that can be undone. And the paint that I would use, you could remove it with spit if you wanted to. And that's actually what you use to clean paintings for the most part, is saliva. The enzymes in your spit break down varnishes very well. For the most part, if you watch a conservator, they'll stick a swab in their mouth and swab it. Get rid of the swab, repeat the step, and do that over and over, inch by inch, on the surface of a painting. Like, now, modern stuff, if a conservator has touched it, if they've had to clean it at any point, it probably has saliva on it. So, just a little fun fact. <laughs> If I could go back into art, I think I would just want to paint myself. Not literally paint myself, because that's there. I've already done that. But paint again, I guess, because that was something that I did not think I would like as much. But I, I had gotten to the point in my schooling where I was like, I think I want to be a painter. And it's something that I've always found very relaxing and it's like meditative, you can imagine. And I would be like alone in the art building for hours, just like staring at the canvas and working on it and doing tiny little details and things along those lines and trying to pick out and, you know, make something appear the way that I wanted it to appear. Personally, being able to accomplish your vision and being able to create that in a way is very satisfying. You know, that's a, that's an, it's a unique feeling, I think, to say, I want this to be like this and to be able to accomplish that and, you know, using your, nothing but your techniques and your person, your paintbrushes and everything like that. Like that's a really good feeling to have, so.